everybody. All right. Well, that was a lot of you right now. Okay, so for anyone who is uh, joining in, remember the chat's going to be off until I get my lesson done. So if you see people chatting and I can't see the chat when it's off, just remind them that when the lesson is done, uh, we'll do some Q&A. So um, from last week, uh, right at the end, somebody talked about Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain and put me on a Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain type kick for the week. And um, I figured I'd do a live lesson on how to do a solo over it, um, especially if you are um, uh, playing it by yourself on acoustic and you, it comes time to the solo part, like how do you carry the song um, and not have it sound like just a solo doesn't know what's going on. So I figured I'd address it. So um, really quickly, this the song really um, is made up of three chords, which is the, the E major, hello everyone, there's a lot of you now, uh, an E major, uh, A major, and a B7. And for everyone who's live right now, I'm sure they, they know it's a 1, 4, and 5 in E. Uh, e being the 1, A being the 4, and B being the, the 5. And we're using a 7th chord, or Willie's using a 7th chord uh, for this B. Now, in the song, uh, the, you know, the song has these alternating bass lines. The, um, it has this 1 and 5 type bass line. And um, it has a country feel. When it, and when it comes time to the solo, uh, he only uses two chords to solo. He uses uh, the E. It's going to be the E with the bass line. There you go. And then the B7. So um, what we want to do... Uh, oh, and actually, before we even um, go there... Actually, well, I'll talk about it in a couple minutes. Is let's just, let's just pick one scale shape. We're going to do it right here where he kind of does it. Okay, so if we're in the key of E, um, then we've got to find our E major scale. So I'm going to use the one that starts right here with our pinky in the 12th fret. And uh, your first finger can go in the ninth fret of the E. Uh, that's the lowest note physically, but the root note's here. So um, fret-wise, just in case you're not familiar with it, you know, 9, 10, 12. Uh, 9, 10, 12, 9. Sorry, really? I'm live and I can't even get it right. Uh, 9, 11, 12, 9, 11, 12, 9, 11, 8, 9, 11, 9, 10, 12. 9, 11, 12. I, I don't know. It's been a crazy day. All right, so now, um, and uh, it really, you just want to know that scale shape. So let's first, let's just see the damage that this can do. I have a loop of the of the backing chords. Let's just see the damage that this can do with, um, with no um, rhyme or reason how good a, a key scale can handle a solo. Let's see. And this is uh, the E and the B going back and forth. Well, really, if I play it right. Okay, so not bad. You can hear it sounds pretty, pretty good, but we want to make it sound really, really good. So how do we do this? Okay, so for the E chord, when he's on the E, uh, we're going to picture or visualize our E chord where we are. Now, this uh, corresponds to this E chord like this, or this E chord like this, which is the G-shaped E chord. All right, so um, if you want to see all the E notes, you're going to have the 12th fret, there's your E, 11th fret of the A, there's your G sharp, here's your B, 7th fret, sorry, 9th fret. Of the D, you have five. All right, you have your E, G sharp. You have a B here, and E. So these are all the notes in this kind of chord shape, all the arpeggios you can get to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, those arpeggios tied in with the fabric of my um, my scale. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Do 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 do. It sounds much better. Now, I did do something right off the bat to kind of like fool you, which is uh, again my most underrated video is the power of the five. Sorry, these lights are so bright that I'm like squinting. Uh, the power of the five. One thing that Willie Nelson most definitely does is he comes in, he does a little pickup on this note here, which is the B, the five, right? And you'll hear him like. Uh. So just starting on the B before we get to the E uh, is huge, and you definitely want to do that. So any B will do. You know, any B. I'll do an example of it. Uh, and then I'm going to use the E major scale for the E. Now when we get to the B7, um, you kind of want to visualize a B7. Now there's many ways to visualize a B7 chord here. The easiest way to do it is the D7 shape with the ring finger on the 12th fret like that. Okay, there's your... That's your... Sorry, I lied to you. Oh my god. <laughs> just, just turn off right now. It's the 11th fret right here. Oh my god. Uh, 11, um, 10, 11. I should have had a coffee. This is what happens when I don't have a coffee, okay? B7, the root note 
note can be here. You can also, if you want to like bar here and make your make the same shape with your root note here, there's the B here. But more importantly, um, you know, you can pause this video in, in the replay and you can get a lot of damage here. You can use these notes. But one thing I really like doing, if this is the one, this is the three. One, three, five. That's this note here. One, three, five. There's your flat seven. There's your three. These notes are going to be very, very good for your B7. So now, all I'm going to do right now is going to play my, uh, my little intro, starting on that 5, the B note, get into the E, use my E major scale, sew together some of the E major chord ar uh, um, arpeggios. Then when it changes to the B7, I'm going to change to my B7 arpeggio, staying within my E major scale, because we are in the key of E. Let's see. Back to the E, all right. E again with the E arpeggios. So B seven. Oh no, back to the E still on the, on the E. B seven. And now the final E. Now I hope you're enjoying this. It's going to go by quickly, and we'll dress it. One thing that Willie Nelson does at the end of his guitar solo, and by the way, I will let you know that this guitar solo is one of the most beautiful guitar solos, I think, um, that uh, when I hear, I'm just like, man, it's it's like, it's perfect. He couldn't have written a better solo, like, at all, you know, <laughs> like, it, crown goes to him. But one thing he does do is he plays a C uh, sharp, like, full diminished, oh, no, a C uh, full diminished, which I guess, you know, here's the, here's the, here's the fret numbers, you know, it's going to be three, four, two, four, and he, he does a chromatic slide, like... to the A, and it's such a cool, jazzy piece, so we're going to steal that idea from him, but I'll show you how to do it in context here. Um, this is a, it's a full diminished chord, it's not a minor 7 flat 5, it's a full diminished, um, so it's a 1 flat 3 flat 5 double flat 7, and it adds, if you listen to this um, a song, it has such a nice feel to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a full diminished kind of where we are. The cool thing about full diminished is here's the shape you want to use, and you probably know this. Um, you're going to start on the G string, let's see, 8, 9, 8, 9. That's a full diminished chord, all right? And um, and all you got to do, 1, 2, 3, and those are all the diminished chords you need, and after the fourth time, it repeats. It's hard to explain, and I'll, I should do a whole thing on it, but each one of these are the root note. So if we can get our pinky onto the C, he starts on a C, so right there, Pinky, if you take the shape, right, you move the pinky right there to the 8th fret, um, that's a C full diminish, and he grows chromatically down with these arpeggios, and then he gets to the A chord here. So I'm going to kind of assign this to you. So the frets are going to be 7, 8, 7, 8. This is a full diminished chord. Each one of these um, notes uh, is the uh, root note. I'll do a whole video on that, but that's your C, so C diminished. Now, this is a hard shape for people to like get down rather quickly, but if you look, and this is like how we cheat on this uh, for the song, if you want to cheat on this, cheating's bad, but you can lift your first finger up and you can see we have that D7 shape, like right there, right? That's it. It shows we're not playing this note. So you can play the D7 shape that, that I showed you earlier, playing it on the eighth fret. So you have eight, seven, eight, and what you can do is you're going to arpeggiate this. like a blues double stop, like a diminished type double stop before it goes to the A. So before I do this, um, really quickly, we're in the key of E, and you have an E chord and a B7 going back, I think about like eight counts each, I believe. I'll shout it out. And uh, I'm going to start on the B note of the E major scale before I get to the uh, E chord. And then on the E chord, I'm going to use the E major scale with the E arpeggios that I pointed out right here and here. And then when it changes the B7, I'm going to use my B7 arpeggios, but I'm going to add one, four, sorry, one, three, five, flat seven, one. I really I kind of want to see that. It's everything there, but you're adding the major third there. And then at the end of the second E, I'm going to use this little C diminished. I'm copying Willie's kind of move here, but I'm just going to arpeggiate it and get to the A. Okay? And so here we go. So let's see what we got. Um, if I can hit the right note, let's see.
back of the E. Stays on the E. Arpeggio. And then the, uh, the guitar solo ends. So before we go, I screwed up because I hit the wrong note and it flustered me, but before we go, one thing you can do is if you want to get more excitement, I'm going to play it one or two more times, is um, instead of staying in the box, you know, here's, here's uh, an E here. And you can use, you know, you've seen the, the stitch method, like the major pentatonic, you can use... E. You can use the pentatonic. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do one more time, but I'm not going to play it with the looper. I'm going to play it as if I'm playing it like acoustically. And your job is, if you don't have a second guitar player, is to try and really stick to those chord tones so that the people listening can kind of like imagine the chords changing behind you. So here we go. Let's see. Um, two, th uh, three, one, two. So there's a quick Blue Eyes, Crime the Rain guitar solo, a la Willie Nelson type move. Um, I'm going to open up right now to some uh, Q&A. We can talk about Q&A here, and then we can talk about Q&A about anything. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Let me just uh, hit this without knocking the camera over. All right, hey, there we go. Um, hey, Jared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this beard. This this beard is, is huge. I was actually contemplating... Um, uh, <laughs> I uh, was contemplating uh, cutting it today, and then I just got too busy. So how's everybody doing? Uh, if you're if you're watching the replay, you can you can go now, or you can watch me interact with the live folk. Um, any Q and A about this particular guitar solo before we move into question and answer land? There's no chat, so I'm just gonna sit here and stare at my beard and contemplate how short I uh, I need to cut it. Also, did any of you guys see? Um, was it Sean Daniel? Sean <laughs> So, hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Uh, do I need to put holes in my guitar to make more? Yes. Oh, man. Have you guys seen uh, his guitar? Um, that Well, it's not written by Willie Nelson, actually. It was written by someone else. Um, uh, I forgot the guy's name. I'm not, you know, I'm terrible at some things. I'm good at other. But uh, you can Google it. Uh, Red Rocks. Oh, with, with, with what? With uh, J, J Red. Um, why can't I get my fish acronyms down? Ah, we got, oh, Trey, Trey Red. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm focusing on the chat. Um, yeah, Willie Nelson's cover of it is absolutely fantastic, but he like he owned the song once he did it. Um, what makes a diminished chord? I missed it. Oh, um, okay, so... Yes, the Q&A started yet. So what makes a diminished chord? Well, there's two types of uh, diminished chords. There is a minor 7 flat 5 chord, which intervals are 1, flat 3, 5 and flat 7, and it looks like this if I'm on the A string, and you know, it kind of looks like you're playing a ninth chord, but the root note's here. And a full diminished bah, 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 is one th uh, flat 3, flat 5, double flat 7, where this note comes down here, and that's the arpeggio that um, that Willie's using. Now, what when to use a minor 7 flat 5 versus a full diminished is going to be um, up to you with the music you're studying, uh, whether or not you want to play a diminished scale on top of it, whether or not you want to play a minor 7 flat 5 because that's in like the um, modal progression. So there's a whole world to diminish, which I should get to, but uh, that, you know, to answer, okay, so diminish refers to the triad, okay, which I hate that word, which is the one flat three and flat five. That's it. That's a diminished triad. Um, then the next thing you can put on top of it is a seventh chord, and you, you don't call a diminished chord. A lot of people call it a diminished chord, but it's not. It's a minor seven flat five chord. And then if you really want to f with that chord, you can double flat the seven and get a full diminished chord. So when you hear somebody say diminished, it really refers to well, it's the triad: the one, the flat three, the flat five. Uh, and then the minor 7 flat 5 would be the chord, and then a full diminished chord is a chord. I will 
stop talking. Okay, I hope I did my question. Sorry, any more Q&A? Go for it. Yay. Yay, I love this stuff. So yeah, I heard, I saw that uh, I got a text. Um, I don't know if it was Hank Williams. Um, any word on the cage uh, minor? Oh uh, yeah, I can do the, the cage minor stuff. I watched the guy, it's two Mac working his guitar. He's got a vid all about Willie Old's guitar. Oh, very cool. Um, um, yeah, Jared, I got your email, by the way, about lessons. I'll be contacting you, hopefully, soon, when I have openings. Um, but, uh, minor cage chord will be in, in the, um, in the master class, which is everything's being filmed. I, 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 I wish you guys knew exactly how much is going on right now. It's crazy. But, um, and you guys see Sean Daniel take a shot at me this morning on his video? Oh, yes. He was kind enough to text me. He was kind enough to text me and say, hey, man, I took a shot at you. And I said, hey, no problem. My, no problem, my friend. He'll get his, you know, in a good way. But uh, <laughs> is it related to the fifth chord of a key? No, the um, the diminished chord is related to, uh, yeah, hey, hey, Cheddar Kung Pao. Yes, you, you actually defended me. Um, uh, the diminished chord is, is related to the seventh chord in, in uh, let's see, I know there's an extension. Uh, not the seventh chord, but the seventh interval, okay? Um, not down to seven, no, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh note of the major scale, that's where you're going to find, um, that's when you're going to find your um, diminished um, triads and your half diminished chords. Uh, what did Sean say? Well, go watch Sean's latest video on his breakdown riff of the shins. You will see. He says it in the first four seconds. Um, oh, and it stoned me. That's good. Um, why do they use the term dominant? Mm, that's a great question. Why do they use the term dominant? And I'm sure there's a great question out, a uh, great answer out there, which I'm missing. But I, you know, it's really funny because I think for a living on guitar, like I think about like what things mean. Um, <clears throat> because you know, you're going to come across three types of, at least three types of seventh chords that are popular. The fourth one's not really. You have the major seventh, which has the major seventh on top of the major um, uh, triad. And then you have the minor seventh, which is the minor seventh on top of the minor triad. And then you get this mixed match of the major tri triad with the, with the uh, minor seventh. And it's like, I don't know if somebody says, well, you know, the it creates this dominance or whatever, but um, it just refers to a major... Uh, tried with the flat seven, and if, if somebody wants to uh, post um, a comment on the exact meaning of dominance, which I'm sure we can all Google or, or look up on Wikipedia, which don't trust Wikipedia. Um, yes, it is. Uh, how about uh, the second, uh, I second that uh, emotion from the dead. Sure. Um, hey, sweetie, are you there? I'm talking to my wife. Yeah. Uh, what was the dead song you really wanted me to do in the mind of? Was it The Music Never Stopped? Yeah. The Music Never Stopped. My wife really wants me to do The Music Never Stopped, so I'm going to do that. Um, I have a funny feeling uh, that next Tuesday, it's about time, I'm going to be doing um, Chalk Dust Torture uh, by Fish, uh, and it's a really awesome jam, kind of what he's doing on the a live one version, which is pretty sick, um, and so we'll, uh, thanks for the assistance, nice to have something to take my mind off the crap going on here in Texas, oh, I'm sorry you're in Texas, um, that's terrible, um, but I feel for you, and I'm glad that uh, this helps out, you know, anything, um, yay, Chalk Dust. Anything to make you smile. I'm sure things will get better. Um, let's see. Uh, Chalk Dust should be fun. Chalk Dust Torture, if you guys, if anybody here is not into, fi in, in, into fish, um, hey, Kevin, um, if you want to see what I'm talking about, then there you go. Saint of Circumstance actually has had this video. I made a promo video. Hey, Saint. Um, showing, like, hey, what do you think of this promo? It was just me kind of soloing over it and saying, coming soon, Chalk Dust. But that was, like, you know, five months ago. But, um... If you, if any guys here are like, hey, what, you know, what is he talking about? If you look up the song Chalk Dust Torture, and let's talk about this. I'm going to talk about this really quickly. I want you guys to, to really do this, all of you. Um, there's a version you can listen to on, on um, YouTube from the album A Live One. Now, the first part of the song is a standard kind of rock song, and then they take off, um, they, they, he takes off into a jam. And I don't know how many of you noticed this, but I love this. I remember hearing this for the first time, which is uh, that jam itself is fantastic. What 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 Trey's doing on guitar is 100% improvisation up till the very last riff. But what you don't realize is that when they go into the solo, um, the microphones on the stage are on. Um, when would you make a beat eraser? Is detention in school? Well, <laughs> Cheddar, listen to the song. Uh, the microphones are on stage. And they're they're jamming so hard that you, he's obviously close to the microphone and he's not saying in the microphone, but you can hear every time the band like moves with them, you hear him go like yeah, you know, and and it's like him shouting to himself how like awesome it is, and then as they crescendo, you'll hear it. He's like da 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 what, and you hear him like screaming with such like joy and exuberation that the band met him at this moment, um, and it's really cool to listen to because he's not he's not looking at the stage uh, at the crowd going yeah, he's like. He's heads down or his heads up. He's just not looking. He's not paying attention. He's just so excited that the band crescendoed with him and he brought it to this point. And it's really awesome to listen to. So that's your listening homework. And I, I suggest you do it. And anybody, um, 
See, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed. Hey, hey, Fred. Hey, hey, man. How you doing? Um, let's see. Chuck does is stupidly gorgeous too. Also worth a close look. Hey, uh, Fred Guitar is here. Um, sorry, Fred. Fred, I'm using the acoustic for this one. I apologize, but I did the eyes of the world. Uh, have yet to met um a deadhead who liked really. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, in the mind of Elmore James. Hey, Don. I'm, I'm seeing you next week. Right? Am I seeing you next week, Don? Explain the extension of the Mixolydian mode, or is there even extension of the mode? I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sure that it means something that I can explain, but I just don't know. I heard today that Jerry played slide on teacher children from... S really? Hmm. Jerry played slide on teacher children well in Crosby, Stills, and Nash? I'll take a look at that. Again, my music, my music, my knowledge of music is terrible, but my music theory knowledge, I think, is pretty on point. Um, let's see. Uh, September 15th. Yes, I'll see you September 15th. All right. Um, it was pedal steel. Awesome. Uh, pedal steel, look at that. <laughs> They're jumping on you. It's pedal steel, not slide. Um, all right, so any other questions? I hope that you enjoyed the first portion of this. I'm trying to think of stuff coming on. Um, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm trying to open up my ray and, and listen to a lot more music and get my mind, you know, uh, thinking of different, different things. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just, I just realized how many guitars I have behind me. And I, man, good times. Um, all right, you guys, I mean, I, I feel like we, we, I feel like we had a good conversation. Any other questions? Uh, diminished. Uh, why do I hate the word triad? Um, start over. You can rewind this, okay? Um, I hate the word triad because it places too much, even though we talk theory. You know, triad is more of like the building blocks. Like, okay, ready? Triad? Okay, very good. I know it sounds stupid. Well, I don't know if this is a good analogy, but triad to me is like the word vertebrae. And like, you know, it, it's like the vertebrae make up the spine, you know? And if you have a back injury, right, or you need a back massage, you're not going to say, I need an individual vertebrae massage, right? Um, and even though the spine is made up of vertebrae and cords are made up of triads, it puts too much like thought onto the actual number while you're improvising, uh, where you want to be able to feel and see the cords. But yeah, like when we talk about, when we talk about the building blocks, like when a doctor is talking about you're, you're injured, you're injured at L5. I'm, I don't even know if it's a vertebrae. I just made it up, but you know, like, you know, you can pinpoint where, and I feel like triads are, are all about, um, uh, um, I'll try, uh, smash that like button. That's great. But to me, um, ooh, Larry Carlton, I didn't Larry Carlton. It, to me, like when you're talking about triads, it's a very theoretical loaded term. And, um, hello, uh, lone resident. And, um, you know, when you're improvising, you know, you kind of want to let go as much as possible and you don't want to think about the triads, but you got to know it. Um, and I hope that makes sense. What's a good way to make a song you've played over and over be fresh? Um, ooh, there's a lot of ways. Detune your guitar, uh, alternate tuning, um, select one chord to be a major versus minor. Like if it's, if you have a three in there, you know, that's normally a minor, make it a major or a seventh. That's going to change it instantly, which is what I wanted to talk about in this lesson. I was like, what am I going to do today? But we'll talk about that later. Um, there's many, many ways, uh, play it on piano, um, play it on a different instrument, uh, all this stuff. How's your student Elliot doing? Oh yes. I <laughs> Elliot was in um, New Zealand for several months. Uh, he just came back, and uh, he's been calling me for lessons, and I will get him back in lessons, and you will see him. Whether or not he progressed in New Zealand, I will not know. Uh, any advice? I think you called it jazz selling mindset, moving the chords to a 12-bar blues. I'm having trouble with the 1, 4, and 5 changes. Um, yes, Blues Masterclass 2 will address that wholeheartedly, but you want to watch my blues soloing mindset video and you want to be able to count to a 12 bar blues like that's the most important thing you got to know how a 12 bar blues moves you got to feel it and it what once the whole like tracking system and attention span is off that then you can start to move freely but if you're still having a hard time following a 12 bar blues you really have to sit and listen to random 12 bar blues songs until you can really feel those changes and pay attention to the drummer they're gonna give you some good cues as to when the change comes um and that's that i missed the whole onslaught of questions that just came through and i apologize so i oh i forgot i can hold on I, but i feel like this is weird you can stare at my hairy arm uh, running a music store uh, in Lake Wales, Florida, the only uh, store in the city we had was Larry Carlton's Fingerprints. Kids that worked. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's the only album you had. <laughs> uh, I probably don't know the actual name, but I mean like playing Mixolydian mode over the neck, but in the same key. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, uh, okay. I know what you're saying, and I'll get to that. I'll do a lesson on that in Stitch Method, okay? I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it for you. I understand what you're saying now, okay? Um, that makes sense. All right, so i uh, got a couple moments before we go. Got to go. Uh, right. Then the flat seven on the major scale. Uh, Mixolydian is a flat seven on the major scale. Right. Kevin. Kevin, who's chiming in. I had a, a couple FaceTime lesson, lessons with him. The guy is brilliant. Um, I didn't see... 
Um, the guy's brilliant. He uh, we had a lesson on modes, and he got it. And he sent me a chart that he made, and I actually want to like be like Kevin. Let me use that chart for modes. Um, but it was it was really good. Major seventh chord. The intervals are just the one, three, five, and seven of a major scale. Um, and if you see this, there are so many ways to play a major seventh chord, but this is the one that feels the best. You know, pinky on the D string, and you cascade up. <laughs> There's a major seven. The intervals are one, three, five, and major seven. All right, and there we go. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. It's the dream chord. Okay. And they're awesome. Um, and uh, what was it? I, I, I forgot. I was watching. Uh, do I have a funky bitch lesson out there? Oh, well, Jared, actually, my blue soloing mindset video, Jared. Um, I talk about funky bitch, and it's all about the, the it's all about soloing, but I do it in A. But watch the blue soloing mindset because that's what Trey is doing at least in 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 his blues. It's what everybody's doing, but it was it was all about the song funky bitch, which uh, I actually saw um, God in, in two thousand at Oswego with Sun of Seals, Sun Seals on stage with the band, and that was pretty good. Um, but can you expand on the practical usage of songs like Stash or Slipknot? Okay, um, all right, so. Um, diminish. I'll, I'll make a video about this. Um, here's the thing about diminished. A lot of people like it's like the mystery, like ooh, diminish, but it's not really a mystery. Um, this is when we use them. We use them to either build tension or to blend chord movements together. Um, you don't really sit in them a lot. Um, here in Stash, you know, the, the chord progression has a diminished chord in it, but it go, it changes. You know, it goes from one chord, uses the diminished, and keeps going. Um, and in um, in Slipknot and Help on the Way. Um, it builds tension on these, uh, those are diminished arpeggios, so you can use them, um, but you can only use them for a little bit of time before you gotta move on. So you're gonna see them connect like a four to a five chord, actually a five to a four, and they'll go five, and they'll play the flat five as diminished, and take it to the four. But in jam band stuff, when you wanna use tension, you're gonna kinda like, sit on it, kinda like in stash. Um, hold on, there was a good question there. Uh, favorite Led Zeppelin riff, um, if you absolutely had to choose, Oh, favorite Led Zeppelin riff. Sweetie? Yeah. <laughs> favorite Led Zeppelin riff. That's impossible, man. If I had to choose, like, if I had to choose. Um, hold on. I'm going to sit here for a little bit. Everybody start writing in answers. Favorite Led Zeppelin riff. Um, like, if I had to choose? Jeez Louise, man. Um, yeah, it's like choosing a child. I think it... <laughs> um, uh, hold on. You guys are just sitting here watching me squirm. I, I really can't answer that. Over the hills and far away, I was just teaching that. Um, <laughs> um, it's not over the hills and far away. I mean, I like over the hills and far away. Uh, I, th oh man. Hold on for one second. Uh, what, she had to choose. I had to choose. Okay, no, no quarter's really good. Um, any tips for learning solos? Um, go slow, go slow. No quarter's really good. Rock and roll. Uh, Fool in the Rain's okay. Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker was pretty awesome. Oh my god, what is... Um... <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to... I do love No Quarter. I mean, I can listen to No Quarter all the time. Um... But it's gonna be something off of Led Zeppelin 3 or Houses of the Holy. Uh... Can nobody's Fault... Oh yeah, Nobody's Fault one is good. Uh, Trampled Underfoot. No, um, you know what? <clears throat> I'll tell you. It, okay, it's not... It's not my favorite. I'm gonna screw it up. I'm gonna screw this up. I'm gonna screw this up. Okay, so like, I'm gonna screw it up. But um, just the one that got me the most. Oh, the rover. But uh, oh wait, <laughs> like you guys are naming some good stuff. Uh, but I'm not saying it's my favorite, but I remember hearing it for the first time. Definitely not the rain song. <laughs> now I'm gonna screw this part up really badly. I haven't played in a while. Let's see. Um... Like when I heard it, I was like, what the... 
That one's good. Um, <laughs> what is no snare? But yeah, even th just a solo, right? Hold on. Oh. That. I mean, that was awesome, right? I don't. There's so much. Uh, uh, well, you know, in Over the Hills and Far Away, I was just teaching this last night. Actually, I was just teaching last night. Over the Hills and Far Away, I, I was talking about how my mind was blown. Um, when I was learning, after the solo, you know, there's that F-sharp part, there's that, uh, and then it comes out, this thing. That. When I heard that, I was like, that's the devil. That's the devil work, but now I understand what he's doing. But I was like, "What did that guy do?" Um, so, uh, oh, Celebration Day is the best. Uh, I think he's a C minor. I think. Um, anyway, uh, what's my favorite Gun Guns N' Roses song? You guys are killing me. Um, if I had to pick my, <sighs> see, I had Appetite Destruction loaded up, and then I went to Use Your Illusion. Um, I think Mr. Brownstone is just. I mean, it's gonna suck. What? Yeah. Mr. Brownstone, right? Like. Sounds pretty awesome. That, that, that's, a, that's a good riff. I mean, that's nasty. Props to the whoever wrote that. Um, all right, guys. I'm going to be going soon. I hope you enjoyed the quick Willie Nelson acoustic style. Um, do do it. Um, also, is there anyone better than Jimmy Page in the in the Song Remains the Same concert? No. <laughs> that His performance in the Song Remains the Same concert, I think, I think most of you have known this, is like, I, I talk about it all the time, like, I remember being 13 and watching his pinky. I'm repeating myself here, but his pinky moves faster than any one of my fingers to date. And it's, it's so terrible to watch because you're just like, what is he doing? But anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me. Willie Nelson, <laughs> Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Go rewind this. Um, the Eyes of the World chart, I still have to make it. I had it made. I had it made. I looked at it and I said, you know what? It's a little more difficult than... The, the chart makes it a little more difficult than how I want to see it, so i got to redo it. Um, yes, repetition on the 12-bar blues. Double thumbs up. Have a good one, Cheddar Kung Pao. Uh, do you want your kids to play guitar? No, I play guitar. I want my kids to play bass and drums and sing so that we can have a family band and tour and have her own variety show, right? Um, so, and my wife can play tambourine. You cool, tambourine? Yeah. So you wanna sing? Um, I just wanna... <laughs> Did you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. All right, so, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you later, guys. Have a great, great, what the heck? All right, uh, good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, go play some Willie and Nelson's Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain for some people. Look up the chords first and then bust out the solo, and then um, you'll get the applause. Good to see you all. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.